Hey everybody, Hunku here with Hot Q&A number 69, and uh, it's been uh, two weeks-ish since the last one, so uh, yeah, I feel like that's a good time to do it, and uh, it, it was so weird doing this again now, after months, because it shows just how much I need to work to get back to where we were with discussion and all that, because uh, it used to be like, I remember I would spend like just so long trying to compile comments because I had so many and I was leaving over half of them out and I'd still end up with like seven pages of notes and then here I am with like two sections two pages of notes uh, within two weeks so I do need to do better of course um, on sort of uh, propelling discussion and all that but uh, either way I'm sure it'll be better now that high Q&A is back and now that comments are actually meaning something more again, you know? Um, I mean, I always read them, but I was really bad for a while there on answering them. But either way, we have a few sections. Uh, two is a little bit of an understatement. First off, I'm going to talk about some general stuff just real quick, and then I'll get into uh, I watched all 18 shows within the past two weeks that are that I'm... Except for Nanatsuno Bitaku, which doesn't air until the 27th. I've watched all the 18 others that I plan to watch this season. I watched the premiere of them. And um, I'm going to tell you what I thought of each premiere just shortly. I'm not going to spend too much time on it. And uh, then leave that open for you to comment down there and tell me which ones you think I should review. I'm probably only going to pick two, maybe three at the most. Uh, weird thing about this season... I didn't particularly dis, except for maybe one, I didn't particularly dislike any show I watched. They were all good, they were all enjoyable. I'm gonna stick with all of them, but uh, none of them really stuck out. None of them had that spark of creativity I saw last season with Hoseki no Kuni, Children of the Whales, uh, or Shoujo Shimatsu Ryoko. None of them jumped out like that to me. None of them just had that it factor to me. Uh, so it's a weird season having no show just jump out at me and be like, okay, I really want to review that week to week. All of them are things that I'm like, they're good, but I kind of want to see where they're going. Uh, but after that, I'll do a section on Blend S where I'll discuss that because I accidentally forgot and left that out of last week's video when I wanted to discuss that. And then I have a Tower of God section from comments from the past two weeks and an El Samu Yasserad and I section from comments for the past two weeks. So uh, that's what's going to be in this one, and I'll have timestamps down at the bottom for uh, where every different thing starts there. My hand is shaking like really, really bad. I don't know what the deal is. Um, but either way, let's get into reading this. Maybe I need to eat something after I record. Who knows? But either way, uh, first thing I have in my notes for the general section, I am working on the uh, top 50 anime waifu video that I said I wanted to do sometime this month, and it should be coming sometime this month for sure. I, I would hope. Um, but yeah, I've worked a lot on it. It's really fun and I enjoy doing it. And I want to do it every January, maybe December, where I just do top 50 anime waifus and see how that changes from year to year. Uh, but either way, I've worked a bunch on that. I still got a little bit of a chunk of work to do. But uh, within the next week, I should be done with everything I need so that maybe around next weekend-ish I can record it. And then by the time I record it, Editing is going to be a little bit of a process, but it shouldn't take more than a couple of days, and then I'll have it up. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I guess that's it. Uh, for the anime of the season, I'm going to go through them now, what I thought of each premiere, and uh, I'll just ask that you comment whatever you want, and we can discuss any of them in the comments and in the next talk uh, Q&A. Or, in addition to that, uh, I'm going to be reviewing two, maybe three week to week, uh, tell me which two, maybe three, you're thinking of, because right now I don't have, like I said, none have jumped out, so I don't have any ones that are like locks for me. Where last season I was like, okay, I want to record maybe two or three, and then I ended up recording five, I ended up uh, reviewing five week to week, uh, because I thought they were so, <clears throat> they were so good I didn't want to miss out on them, you know? Uh, and in addition to the two or three I pick, I'm also going to keep going on with One Piece. I'm going to keep going on with um, uh, with Mohotsuka Niyome, because that has a second core. Uh, but either way, starting us off, we have Death March. Uh, it had a long... Death March something something, Isekai something something. Long title, uh, but I know if you watched it or you're keeping up with anime, you can recognize it by just Death March. And I'm going to stick to non-spoilers for all these, so don't worry about that. Um... 
I'm just going to give my general thoughts in case maybe you're looking for suggestions even you want to watch stuff. So starting off with Death March, I think it's the same harem isekai setup you've seen 20 times already. Um, yeah, trust me, it is the same exact setup as so many other shows, but it isn't the worst. I Well, I thought it was pretty good. The thing with it, and what I mean by it isn't the worst, is like... I've seen that same exact setup like 20 times already, and this isn't the worst I've seen that setup done. I've seen that setup done worse by shows I liked. I liked Isekai Smartphone. Was it a good show? No, but it was enjoyable. I had fun watching it. Um, and I mean, I guess in its own way it was kind of a good show in that aspect. I had fun watching it each week. Uh, but yeah, this does, at least from episode 1, this does that setup better than that did. Uh, next one up. American Maidkin, or Markin Maid Madkin? I don't know how to pronounce it, but uh, yeah, American Maidkin. Uh, was very, very average, which was weird because I totally overestimated it. I watched the PV and I thought it was going to be like really artsy, really good, and then I watched the show and I'm like, oh, that's just your average sort of anime looking thing. So uh, yeah, I totally overestimated what it was going to be like. Um, so I'm still going to watch it. I still think it looks pretty alright. It looks very average, uh, but it just wasn't at all. I was expecting it to be like high budget or really good looking, and I don't know how or why my expectation and reality ended up being so different. Um, slow Start, I didn't know if I was going to watch Slow Start. Um, I thought it was just going to be kind of like your boring average slice of life, but I actually thought it was a really nice slice of life. Just from the first episode, I never found myself bored while watching it. I laughed a few times. I thought it was just a fun slice of life comedy. It it was better than my expectations on that end. Uh, Toji no Miko didn't have huge um, expectations. And it was kind of weird. I think it had a great concept. I thought the animation looked fine. I thought it looked good. It had some... Uh, CGI insert at the very beginning once, but even then the CGI insert didn't look as bad as Attack on Titans, and Attack on Titan is like a huge high budget thing. Um, so yeah, I thought it was a great concept, but I thought it had really weird writing in that they acted like we should already know the concept, they acted like we should already know all these characters. Um, even though this is an original, there's a manga that came out I think a month or two ago that's based on the anime. Uh, but somehow ended up coming out before the anime. But, uh, and I think there's supposed to be a mobile game coming based on this. And it's, it seems like a very mobile game based show. But, uh, yeah, I thought it was a great concept, but super weirdly written. I, I don't understand, like, they, they just act, like, they rushed into acting like we should know who all the characters are. Uh, but I think they may rectify that in future episodes. That's just my impression of the first one. Uh, Yuru Camp, I haven't watched episode 2 yet. Uh, I thought it was really comfy and fun, and I saw tons of potential with it. Um, there were some Slice of Life shows last season, that I or last year, that I thought were some of the best shows of the year. Uh, I absolutely loved Hinako Note. I really, really liked Gabriel Dropout, even though that's a bit different in concept than this. I really liked Maid Dragon, and I feel like Yuru Camp could have that same sort of comfy, fun... Um, slice of life, but have a really good story behind it, too. I see a lot of potential with Yudu Camp. Um, next up, Sora Yori Motoi Basho, or A Place Farther in the Universe, I think is what some people are calling it. Uh, I thought it was really fun and well made. It has a lot of potential. Episode 2 in particular was great. This is one I've already watched a second episode for. And for all these, for whichever ones I decide to review, I'm gonna go back and review episode 1 before I jump into episode 2 and all that. Um, but yeah, and I'll just pump out reviews all this week to catch up to them. But uh, yeah, I thought it was really fun, tons of potential. Episode 2 was great. One thing I like about it, I like the lyrical OST songs that they've used in both the first and second episodes. Um, I just like lyrical OST songs. I think they add a lot more emotion than just instrumental ones. Uh, one thing that I will count as a kind of negative for Tsura Yuri Motoi Basho is that their hair triggers me. It looks like... Maybe it's just me, but their character designs, their hair looks like plastic attached to their head, like Lego people hair or something. It's so weird. Their hair just triggers me. Every time I see it, it really annoys me. I don't know why. Um, next show up, Ryuo no Oshigoto, uh, Lalakan show. 
it would seem very reminiscent in ways of um, in ways of Tenchi no 3P. Tenchi no 3P told a really good story though. This looks like it could tell a good story. Not in the same way. This looks like more of a shonen ish story. Uh, but it way exceeded my expectations. I thought it had a ton of potential, like even so much that even though I know nothing or care nothing of Shogi, I could possibly review this week to week and have fun with it. Like the character designs are really cool. I like the way the story is set up. Um, yeah, again, the only negative is, like, they're taking everything super, super seriously. Like, when he was, like, throwing up and about to pass out in the hallway, and I'm like, dude, you're playing a board game. Uh, but either way, um, that was kind of my thoughts on that. I thought it was really, really good. Next up, Violet Evergarden. When it comes to production quality, this is the best one of the season. Like, none of the others are even close production quality-wise. Um, so if there's any that does stand out... To review it would be Violet Evergarden because damn it's beautiful and really really unique. Uh, it has tons of potential too. The only thing I don't really like about it is that love drama kind of stories aren't really totally my thing uh, for the most part. But other than that it's just a really really good looking show. So if there's any that's a shoe in to be reviewed I would say probably Violet Evergarden. Uh, I think it would be I don't know. I don't think it'd be as fun to review as some shows I've reviewed in the past, but it could prove me wrong. The, epi the first episode was great. Um, next up is Citrus. Now, Citrus was a weird, was a weird start, because I simultaneously felt like it had more potential than most of the other anime this season to tell a really good story, and at the same time thought the first episode had a lot of things I really didn't like. It's like there were so many things I liked about it, and then so many things I didn't like. One thing I didn't like reminded me way too much, and I saw this from a bunch of other people, way too much of Netsuzo Trap, which wasn't the worst thing ever, but uh, NTR, we do not need this NTR bullshit. Um, also, I couldn't stand how rushed some of the things felt, uh, like we're rushing straight into a physical kind of relationship between the characters, even if it's not quite romantic yet. And I kind of felt like that takes away from the impact of when it would get physical later on in the story. And, like, Yuri romance was what proved to me that romance in anime could be done not terribly. Because, basically, any romance I had seen in anime for years and years was really generic, cliche, and overall terrible. Just, anime romance was some of the worst kind of romance. It was terribly written in almost every show. And then... Yuri Kumarash proved to me that just a romance, not even a romantic comedy, not a ro romance in action, no, it was just, that was an artsy romance show, and it proved to me you can get by on telling a good story with just romance. And then I rewatched um, a show that I hadn't finished all the way the first time, which is Mika Kunin de Shinkohei, and I, or Shinkoke, and I loved that show. I thought that had a really good romance, though the comedy was more of a focus and better than the romance, it had a really good romantic storyline. And then the romantic aspects of, um, of Maid Dragon were really, really good. So for Citrus, I think it could be, because I keep hearing people say it's the best Yuri romance and your boy loves Shoujo Ai, um, so I think it has tons of potential. It could be a great story, but I think at least for the first episode, I didn't like the NTR aspects, and I've heard that's not going to play a role in future episodes, so I'm hoping that's true, and uh, I, couldn't, I didn't really like so much the way it was sort of rushed into. But uh, either way, like I said, very, very on the fence, like teetering between great and terrible. Uh, next, Mitsuboshi Colors, one of my favorite ones, actually, that I watched. Uh, Mitsuboshi Colors was so fun, and it was really creative, too. I, I really loved it. I thought it was the funniest show, for sure. I laughed a bunch. Um, and yeah, I'm really looking forward to Mitsuboshi Colors. Uh, I find that comedies aren't really the easiest to review or to talk about week to week, so I don't know if I would review it, but it is it is one of my favorites. Um, Kokoku, if, it's probably up there with Violet Evergarden for ones I could see myself reviewing. Kokoku really blew away my expectations. The animation wasn't that great, but the music and the story was so damn good. I loved the mystery of it. Uh, so yeah, Kokoku blew away my expectations. And the opening, holy damn, that opening is probably the 
most creative anime opening I've seen in a long, long time. And the song is a legitimately great song. Um, Killing Bites, next up. Hot main character. Oh my god, you know I have said Girls with Muscle. Yes, please. Um, it seems like a really simple show. For some reason, I don't know if it's the designs. Maybe the person who designed characters is on both, is on the production staff for both. But it reminded me a lot, and I saw other people saying it too, reminded me a lot of Junie Tyson for some reason. Uh, it seems super simple. Well, I mean, I guess storyline-wise it is similar to Junie Tyson too in ways. Uh, but yeah, I thought it was a simple show, but really, really fun. I'm definitely going to enjoy watching it. So, I mean, I could review it if that's something you all are interested in. Beatless had a really generic setup, but done really well. I really enjoyed Beatless. I thought the designs were really good, and they sort of made it a little less generic because I like the character designs. <laughs> I made a joke even on Twitter about the lolly robot with the four eyebrows. Um, but yeah, I thought it was good. I liked Beatless. I just watched it this morning. Uh, Hakata Tenkotsu Ramens. Um, I, I spelled that incorrectly in my notes here. I really liked that one too. That's another one that could be a shoe into review. Uh, I've seen a lot of people not talking about it or it's not getting much attention, but I really loved the first episode for that. Um, I thought it was really a badass setting with all the, um, with all the hitmen and stuff. And I thought the character designs were really, really cool. So, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to that one a lot. I could review that if that's something you're interested in. Hakame Tamikichi is another one I could review. It might be my favorite. Uh, that's what I was saying in Discord. I was like, so far, I think maybe the best, if I'm looking objectively, was Violet Evergarden, but my favorite, I think, was Hakame Tamikuchi. I thought it was really creative and unique. I thought it was cozy and fun. It kind of, it was way different than Shoujo Shimatsu Ryoko, but there were certain things about the general feel of it that felt similar. Uh, but I liked it a ton. Possibly my favorite. Uh, Takunomi, uh, short. It has 12-minute episodes, I'm assuming, because the first episode was 12 minutes. It was just a fun slice of life. Not amazing, but enjoyable. Um, again, not the best slice of life I've seen, but I think it's going to be fun to watch weekly. Uh, Mira no Kaikata was so cute. That was the cutest thing this season. Uh, Hakame Tomikachi was pretty cute too, but Miro no Kaikata was so cute. Um, I thought it was one thing I said when I was watching it in Discord. I said, it is so relaxing and chill. Like, that is the most relaxing show. If you want to relax, watch Miro no Ka Kaikata. Um, and then the last one is one that I'm going to end kind of negatively. The only one of the 18 I didn't really like, Darling in the Franks, which is super weird because... I mean, you all know I've said before I'm a Trigger fanboy. If you're ever to ask me what my favorite animation studio is, I generally would say Trigger is my favorite. Um, but then Darling in the Franks happened, and the the concept, I was like, okay, it's going to be whatever, but maybe it'll end up being great because it's Trigger. So I went into it thinking it's going to be Trigger quality. Um, and it ended up being the only premiere I disliked but because it was beyond disappointing. Um, the biggest thing was, with the exception of Violet Evergarden, for a long shot, th this had the best production quality. The production quality was incredible, but it was just so cliche and generic. Like, oh man, it, w it feels like it took the worst parts of Kill la Kill, and Kill la Kill was a great show. There weren't too many things I didn't like that much about it, but it seems like it took some of the bad parts of that and the bad parts of what made Kiesniver not so great. Um, and even then, that's saying something, because Kiesniver to me is like the proverbial red-headed stepchild of Trigger anime. And to, to say that uh, this kind of took the worst parts of Kiesniver and is the worst parts of Kiesniver, because it feels like it's just going to be a shipping fest. It's like it's set up specifically to have this story, but we're not going to focus all the way on that story because we have to focus on which characters are getting shipped with which. Um, that and just, again, the character designs, the setup, super cliche and generic, like incredibly cliche. Just this same season, we're seeing other shows with the same setup, like, um, let me, what was it? Like, for certain, uh, Killing Bites and uh, Beatless, where it's the normal, generic male main character uh, meets up with a powerful female character, and then they end up 
going on an adventure or whatever and it changes his perspective on things and sort of saves her from the life she had before some such nonsense we've seen the same setup happen a million times but for some reason in with darling in the franks whereas i thought beatless did that story really well and killing bites was simple but still fun because I guess I hold Trigger to a, such a higher standard, maybe, and because the story didn't quite match with how good the production was, I just felt like it was so disappointing. I feel like they should be better than this. It felt below them. So, uh, yeah, I, I didn't like Darling in the Franks. I'm going to still give it a chance because it's going to be 24 episodes and it's got 23 to turn things around for me, but just from the introduction and seeing the uh, setup setup was just so bland uh so yeah that's the only one i haven't uh haven't really been into next up we get to have our blend s discussion finally hideri is best at hideri i am in love with an animated character and that is hideri and um yeah it's it's not not the straightest thing i've ever said but um yeah, that, that's that's basically my favorite thing about the show, was just seeing Hideri. But no, it, seriously, it was a really funny show. It was really fun. It was one of the better slice of life all year. Um, I think for me, though, there was a negative, and because that negative is basically why I wanted to have a discussion on it, uh, just to see what other people were thinking, I thought there was too much focus on Micah and Dino. I thought that Micah wasn't a terrible character. She was enjoyable when she was with other characters and when she was alone. But when she was paired with Dino, it was just so hard to watch. It was so boring and bland. And the relationship felt just so creepy and off-putting. And we see that a lot, and I bring that up a lot in anime. And not even just in anime. It happens a lot in movies and TV shows. Where there's the sweet, innocent one character, whether they're male or female. And then the other character that almost seems a little bit predatory towards them and that was kind of the Mike and Dino relationship he seemed almost sort of sort of creepy towards her um, but even with that I think the big problems the big problem was with Dino as a character because then we got the scenes where it focused on Dino alone where it was just him out in the park or him dealing with a uh, owner or whatever was that the dog's name yeah um, and even those scenes were boring and hard to watch, so whenever it was a Dino scene or a Dina and Maiko scene, I was, in some episodes, like, the nearly the whole episode would just be that one or two character, and I'd be like, oh, why are we focusing on them? Why can't we see Mafuyu? She's a really interesting character. Why can't we see, um... It's been so long. Kaho and Akizuki. Why can't we see them? They're an interesting couple with a cool dynamic relationship. Um, even though they're not, like, technically a couple. The shipping was there for us, you know. Um, I'm like, why... Except for Hideri's um, introduction episode, why do we barely see Hideri? Why is he really thrown in the background most of the time? And then the biggest one was uh, Miyu. That was her name, right? Amane Miyu. She was never in the storyline. Miyu was never anywhere to be found. She would show up occasionally, barely do anything... But she was, like, barely in the show. So I'm like, what's even the point? Why don't we get to see these other, much more interesting characters? So that was my problem, is I just think that it focused too much on Mike and Dino, and we've seen that with a lot of shows in the past, where they have this cast of really interesting characters, and they focus on the most boring characters of that interesting cast. Um, so yeah, that was my issues with Blend S. I just wanted to get that discussion out there and see what other people thought. Next up is Tower of God. We got a couple comments here. First up, Anime Watcher. Anime Watcher said, I think for any writer of a long-running series, they'll have to change some things here and there so that they don't get stuck in their writing later in the future. It's whatever, as long as the world's still consistent, then the little faults like character inconsistencies can be improved on. Or maybe CU just didn't have enough room for any other serious characters other than Kun and Sachi in the group. Uh, I'd learn drawings so that I could draw my own characters like CU can. For me, I think the writing is still fine for Tower of God, and what we're talking about is Boro's character and consistency. Uh, I think the writing is still fine, it's just that if you marathon read Tower of God, go back and marathon it, there's this some there's some point. I don't know if it's sometime during... Um, no, it, it has to be between... 
It has to be between when they were on the Hell Train and uh, Dollar Show. That's what it is. It has to be between Dollar Show because he still felt like the original Boro in Dollar Show. It has to be between there and maybe... Maybe the change started somewhere along the way in Name Hunt Station. But there's just some place where Boro took a 180 where he started off. He was this calm veteran uh, mentor to the others. He felt like he was kind of a mentor and he felt kind of not an equal with Bomb on in terms of power but in terms of when they were leading their group back at the original station when they were first getting on the train it felt like he was leading alongside Bomb as like a sub leader uh, and then out of nowhere he becomes this really loud and boisterous comedy relief character and it was like that's nothing at all like what the original was so it's totally weird how his character just changes. Um, I, I, I don't know why CU did it. Like you said, I think it might be because he was like, okay, maybe we need a comic relief character. But I don't necessarily think we do need one. And even if we do, we could have introduced one or we could have used one. We have comic relief characters. I don't know why Boro just out of nowhere hits a point where his character just changes and barely resembles the original. I don't quite get it. Um... And then they replied again, uh, Boru's character design even really looks different now Now that I think about the comparison between his first appearance and his latest appearance. And yeah, I see that too. His, his character, I don't know if I want to say they look more cartoony, but I think he is drawn a little bit more cartoony and less serious. So it's, it's kind of weird. It's a weird situation. Like, I'm not saying it's bad or that CU's bad, I just think it's such a weird situation that the character randomly changed. Um, Phenom Uprising said, About Edwan knowing about V having a son, the only explanation I have is that it's probably Yuan Sung. They did meet before, and Yuan Sung was waiting for Bomb, so he's in the know about him. He prepared a plan with Edwan for V's son's arrival. And see, that makes sense. I'm glad you brought that up, and that's why I wanted to bring it up here as part of the discussion. Because I was wondering, I was like, there's tons of ways that they can write to explain it, but if this is Edwam from the Hell Train, how does he know about V having a son to wait for him and all that? But that is actually probably the best explanation, uh, that it was Yuan Sung, because like you said, there's evidence for it. They met before, Yuan Sung was waiting for Bomb or V son or whatever, so um, yeah, totally makes sense. And then lastly, Renan said, um, I really like this chapter. Edwan has a cool design, Rachel had a nice scene, Kun and Rack were cool, and finally the sworn enemies are appearing dangerous. And at last, Young Zahard will show up. Uh, two points I want to hit on here. I totally agree with basically most of that. But uh, yeah, I'm really, really happy the most about the sworn enemies looking important and being dangerous. Like, uh, I'm really... That, to me, is one of the best concepts of this arc, the Sworn Enemy concept, and for a while it felt like we weren't really doing anything with it, so for them to be important, I'm really excited about that. And as for Young Zahard, I'm kind of hoping he doesn't show up, um, at least this early. I would have kind of liked it if he just stayed in the King's Cradle and we had Bomb's group journey to him, because we just had this last arc where before the group even really got that far into the arc, Hell Joe left his stronghold, came to them, and just had to end up fighting against the Rankers and stuff. So Young Zahard coming to them this early in the arc, I kind of don't want to see that. I want to see them have to go through some stuff and journey to make it to him. Um, and from what we know about Zahard, even, uh, it seems like he'd be more cautious than this. It seems like uh, he would observe them more, especially if he's like, I need to see this for myself. He has all those lighthouses he could watch it on. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I, I don't want Young Zard to show up this early. Uh, as a character showing up, like, seeing him discuss what's happening, I'm fine with that. I don't want to see him meeting Bomb's group this early. Uh, but either way, that's it for Tower of God this week. And then lastly, I have one comment to discuss for Elf Samba Yasserada and I. Uh, Seek210 said, this ch er, the chapter was hilarious, the, er, and so funny the little faces to censor things. It was so funny that the satyr was embarrassed by seeing Erufuda and Naue naked, and Erufuda had no shame in being seen naked, and was more proud than anything. I still think the best part was when Erufuda got the supply of endless fries. 
That was great. That was hilarious. I love this manga so much. The art is great. Characters and character designs are great. Um, and Edufuda becoming the king of fries and returning to her bad attitude was just the best. Um, so yeah, just quick discussion, but I wanted to throw that in there just because I love Elfsama Yasuda and I so much. Uh, but either way, that's it for this week's A. Uh, I'm going to go take a break after recording this because damn. But either way, that's it. Like if you did like the video, comment down there. Tell me what you thought of this week's, uh, what, well, what you thought of everything in here. Uh, my thoughts on all that. If you have anything else you want to discuss next week about anything we cover or anything that I'm watching, uh, just throw comments down there. We can discuss stuff. So that's it. Thank you once again for watching. I'll see you all. Or wait, like, comment, subscribe, follow on Twitter. If you want to link to our Discord, just ask and I'll give you one. That's it. Thank you once again for watching. I'll see you all next time.